Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. It's a fall day here when we're recording this, the end of November, right before Thanksgiving. Um, so excited to have with us on the program, uh, Joe DiMaria. Joe, say hello to everyone. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, I said your last name correct, right? You nailed it. Perfect. Because I know like the three practice runs were really bad. So I'm glad I got <laughs> this right. Joe, grateful to have you here today. I'm grateful to give our audience some meat that they can chew on um, on their drive here home or, or uh, to work. Um, tell me, Joe. And how did you get into dentistry? Tell me about your background. So my background is actually as a law school dropout, a marketing uh, guy in Silicon Valley, starting to take over companies in different industries as I've kind of progressed throughout my career. And along the way, one of the big things I got involved in was actually the buying and selling of dental practices. And I, I did that with a client of mine who all they did was they'd roll up around 20 practices a year and sell them. But in doing that, you tend to find a heck of a lot of problems. And uh, as a marketing background and more of a operations and entrepreneurial brain, it kind of opened some doors to helping some of these practices over the years. And, you know, it's one of the the industries I really enjoy and playing in along with law and things like that. Sure. So, Obviously, buying and selling practices, you've definitely been around the block or two. Tell me about today. What's going on? What are you hearing out there? What are dentists talking about today? What's kind of the some of the problems and challenges you're hearing them talk about? Well, there's a couple big things that are trending right now in those sorts of discussions. And it's still kind of the buying and selling of practices. I think a lot of folks have found themselves, especially post-COVID in practices, that they don't really... I think it was kind of a wake up call for a lot of people that they don't really want to be running the business they're running. Um, sometimes we wake up 10, 15 years down the road in this really beautiful golden cage, and we don't really know how to extricate ourselves from that thing. So a lot of it is, hey, how do we actually start positioning ourselves to step out of this business? What's the big vision for what we're doing? And kind of how do we re-architect the business we're in that might be successful, but a little bit off the rails for our personal goals or maybe our even our professional goals where we thought we would be or where we really you know, envisioned ourselves being at this point or even down the road? Um, yeah. So, Joe, let me ask you this question. So, you know, I, I think when, when people clearly know, like, hey, this is it's not where I want to be in life, right? I'm, I feel maybe I'm trapped. You, you said a golden cage. I love the way that you phrase that. But, the, you know, maybe I feel trapped by this business. Or maybe I just really feel like an employee in this business, right? Those are some things that kind of come to my mind that maybe somebody feels like they're in that, that golden cage that you described. What are some other things? What are some tales that, you know, maybe someone is feeling or going through that's, telling them like, hey, maybe this isn't the right spot for you. Oh, I mean, like the big tells are if you have built this thing and you can honestly tell yourself that if you started 10, 15, 20 years ago, if you could show this business to the person 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they would be over the moon with what you've built and you are miserable in it right now, you have misarchitected the business. And a lot of the time that's because you've chased growth and you just did all the right things to continue making money. But there is the humanistic side of business too, that if we go 10, 15, 20 years down the road in the wrong direction, we can, again, we can find ourselves locked up in that beautiful golden cage where we, unfortunately, if we if we don't have a good strategy to re-architect the business and make it kind of align with our personal and professional goals, you can make more and more money and it won't amount to anything but more and more misery. And you see that a lot with the the dentistry profession in particular. You see it a lot with my attorneys. You see it a lot with my doctors or my financial advisors and family office folks. Um, these are all very lucrative industries, but if we're not intentional about what we build, then we end up with this this thing that we're kind of handcuffed to. And it's very difficult to emotionally deal with that at a certain point, right? 
Sure. Yeah. So you find out you, you, you wake up, you find out you're in that golden cage. You admit that you're in the golden cage and you want to get out of the golden cage. What are some steps that you can do? What are some steps that you can take today to, to get yourself on a, on a path to fulfillment and happiness? So the cool thing about this is it works with pretty much any industry I've ever seen it, because it's it's fundamentally a person to person business, right? Dentistry is a very relationship based game. And that means that if you're going to run a practice that you actually want to be a part of, the first thing I always ask folks is, where do you want to be? What do you want to have, be, or do in 25 years? And for a lot of my clients, it's, I want to be retired. I don't want to touch this thing. I don't want to, you know, I want to be out in five years. And I say, okay, well, in 25 years, if these are the list of things you want to have, be, or do, what's your checkpoint in 10 years to know you're on the right path? What does that look like? What do you need to have be or do? And I say, okay, what does that need to be in three years as a checkpoint? Now, the funny thing is when you're in the middle of the burning room, you can't really tell what's going on. But when you look at that three-year checkpoint compared to where you are today, it becomes very clear that there need to be monumental shifts in the way that you're running your practice or you're going to be miserable. Right. You can tell, again, one degree off of your destination over thousands and thousands of miles is a significant missing of the target. But if you can break down that 25 year vision into just something that's three years down the road, 12 months down the road, you can start to see how far off you've fallen. And it'll show you things like maybe you need to you know, start really developing systems and procedures so that you can offload a lot of the administrative responsibilities that are still falling on your plate, or maybe it's you need to step down and have somebody be able to fill in a lot of your uh, patient responsibilities. Maybe you want to, in three years, only be in the office one day a week. Well, those are all things that need to be orchestrated. They don't just happen on accident. And it gives you a window into a lot of the things that you're frankly just not paying attention to until the exact moment you need them. But these are things that are orchestrated over years before you can really implement them. Sure. So I think what happens oftentimes, I, I see this happen I, right now, is you're, I'm sure, well aware, there's dentists feel probably more so than ever that they're being squeezed by the insurance companies, right? And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of conversations about fee for service, fee for service. And I see people out there that are like, that's it. Next month, I'm going fee for service. And then you see a follow-up post, and I'm talking about what I'm seeing on the internet here. You see a follow-up to a post like, you know, hey, I went fee for service and half my patients left. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of feels like somebody who probably made a decision a little hastily, right? Didn't really think about the future and, and planning and putting that together. Um, so it failed, right? And then other people uh, then think it's a failure, and then they get scared and they don't want to to do it themselves. But the fact of the matter is if, if somebody makes a plan, right, and they, they put the steps involved in, in putting a plan, that, that almost always comes to fruition, doesn't it? If the plan is done intentionally. I mean, I, the thing that most people fail to understand is that a business is just a machine. So a lot of the time we are upset with what the machine is producing and we just try to find new ways to throw more stuff into the front end of the machine, hmm. expecting the outcome to be different. But when like the difference between getting squeezed by the insurance companies or just switching our, our front end model and then not being happy with what it produces on the back end, it's, it's not an input or output problem. It's a machine issue. And a lot of the time we try to just change what we're doing at the front of the machine without changing the machine in and of itself. Like it, it is a short sighted way of looking at building a business. So mm -hmm. without that level of intention, we can make a lot of changes that sound really great, but putting them in place, implementing them, like the, the practicality of this can be a really, really difficult transition for folks, right? I mean, and it'll work for some if they are intentional, but you could do what you're doing today without making any massive shift and you can build a more intentional business and you will be more successful. These are, there's very small changes. We're just, we're trying to solve our scaling issues 
in dentistry by making front end changes when there's probably more holistic business model changes that need to happen. There's probably bigger positioning changes or bigger positioning conversations that need to happen. There's likely a hell of a lot of assumptions we're making that are stopping us from building a better business, but instead we're just hiring, you know, again, a, a, a front end monetization change to think that's sure. going to change our entire ecosystem. And it just frankly will not. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, let me ask you this, Joe. So uh, we've had Sean Crabtree from the Crabtree Group on this show a couple, couple of times. It's a lot of fun to have on. And he and I were having just a, a side conversation, a personal conversation on the phone a week or two ago. And he talked about, brought up Tiger Woods, and he said, if I want to hit the golf ball, just like Tiger Woods hits the golf ball. Um, he said, if I put my feet in the same spot as Tiger Woods and my legs in the same spot, my hips and my back and my shoulders and my arms, and I swing the club exactly like Tiger Woods swings, swings the club, I'm going to hit the ball just like Tiger Woods hits the ball. I totally agree with that. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, a great analogy, but it is very true. So if I want to hit the, the ball like Tiger Woods and I think I'm copying Tiger Woods and it's not getting there and I realize, hey, I need a coach. I need somebody to help me with this. Um, I've tried so many times and failed to hit the ball like Tiger Woods. How would you recommend I, I go and, and find a coach? How do I vet someone such as yourself uh, to help? Um, what do you look for? The biggest thing that I look for when I hire anyone, and the very nature of what I do is I end up hiring a lot of vendors for a lot of different companies. What I always look for is I want somebody that's not giving me the plan for today. I want somebody that's giving me the plan for where I'm going. It's very easy to just throw different tools, tactics, shiny objects in front of what I'm doing today and tell me it's going to go somewhere. But the onus, the responsibility in bringing in vendors, coaches, consultants, whatever that is to get you to the next level is not just to solve today's problem. It's to orchestrate your path to an entire new business, right? It's, it's a big fundamental shift. And a lot of the time we spend tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of dollars on short-term changes, shiny objects, little tactics. And the reality is we should be focused more on holistic strategy changes that are going to fundamentally change the entirety of the business. When, when we invest all this money in tactics or coaches or consultants that come in and they tell us we need something without actually trying to understand our business, I look at that as you spend all year collecting ornaments and tinsel and you wake up on Christmas Day and you forgot to buy the tree. I mean, those things are supposed to hang off of a strong, structurally sound business. They don't work by themselves. They're not solutions in and of themselves they are ornaments. So if you don't have the tree, you are wasting a tremendous amount of money bringing all these folks into your business. And they don't know where you're really trying to go. And it certainly doesn't help if you don't know where you're really trying to go. And that's why you woke up in the golden cage in the first place. Yeah, that's good. I love the way that you brought that full circle. Um, let me go ahead and Joe, the best way to get a hold of you is at teachtoscale.com, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You guys can find me at teachtoscale.com. And every week we do a free office hours session um, where you have conversations with me just like this. It's open. It's available for anybody. We've been doing it for about three years. That's at 8 a.m. Pacific. If you're interested in that, you can go to tryofficehours.com and sign up. Yeah, that's fantastic. Joe, I appreciate you coming on and sharing with our audience. I want to encourage our our listeners to check it out, teach to scale.com. Um, Joe, again, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search the dental brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of the dental brief.